watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Why? Should I be discouraged, oh my? And why should the shadows come? And why should my And I know he watches over me. So I sing because I'm happy. said on, 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 was it last night Joyce Myers? She said double. This word came last night, he doubles. Double. So he doubles my grace as my burdens grow greater. He doubles my strength as my labors increase to my added afflictions. God doubled his mercy to my multiplied trials. He doubles his peace. Y'all don't know these songs. Has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundaries known unto man. For out of the infinite riches in Christ Jesus. 
that's God giveth and giveth and doubles again. In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads the dear children along where the waters cool flow, bathes the weary child's feet, God leads his dear children along sometimes on the mountain where the sun shines so bright God leads his dear children along oh, yeah. sometimes You gotta go there. In the darkness of the night, he leads his dear children along. Now some uh, go through the water, and some go through the flood. Ever feel like that? Some go through the fire, but all go through the blood. Some have great sorrow. God gives us a song. It's in the night season. And all the day What a fellowship I feel the Holy Ghost here What a joy divine Leaning on Urebe kisse de la la hos Endele na la basso curre ande la la bos on the everlasting arms What a blessedness My God, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim's way while I'm leaning on the everlasting arms oh how bright the path grows from day to day leaning on the everlasting arm what have I to dread Tell me what have I to fear If I'm leaning on the everlasting arms Your I've got blessed peace With my Lord so dear Leaning on the everlasting arms My God, I stole Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. I'm leaning, oh, leaning, leaning on. The everlasting 
I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. I feel church now. In the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I that's got a sister on his voice the throat. doctor say I got a sister the size of a dime and I'm not supposed to be able to say I think I'm doing pretty good for that because I can't depend on what the doctors say I got to trust in the Lord you better hear me and if he can heal me from leukemia then I can be healed of this cyst and during this time of jubilee I'm believing for everything baby everything it's my time, it's my time, it's my time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking selfish right now. You know, I can pray for everybody else, but then there comes a time where you got to go for yourself. Every man for himself, and baby, it's my time. I'm not leaving it here without myself. Somebody say yeah. going nowhere without my stuff they're going to preach me into my place they're going to preach down my belongings they're going to impart in me the things that I need before I leave this ground I'm going to have everything I'm supposed to have you better be and if you sit next to somebody who's dry as a desert Baby, move out of the way. Get out of the way. Get next to somebody who's got a match that can set your up. And I'm ready for the word tonight. And I'm telling you, I'm going to eat every bit of it. The bitter and the sweet, because I need this. There's a Shabbati Yereshkoho. There's a song, Nes Tukuria. I'm trying to. I don't know if y'all know this. song that the Lord gave me I get a song every now and then song he gave me sitting on a plane throwing a temper tantrum 
I got my song. No one had it. It wasn't, I wasn't in the Holy Ghost. You know, in, enveloped by the Holy Spirit. No, I was throwing a fit. Wasn't no speaking in tongues. Wasn't no hallelujahs. It was a day where I was, I was just mad. It's 2.30 in the morning, leaving L.A. on the red eye. Wanting to go home and couldn't go home. Going from there to Detroit to past Detroit to go to Atlanta. And I hadn't been home in two weeks. And I was mad as fire. Because I wanted a normal life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be normal like everybody else. I didn't ask for this. It was never a desire of mine. And I wanted to sing, but this was a little bit too much, God. Now, if you take this from me, I'll be okay. Just give me what I need. Don't have a wife, don't have nothing to my name, God. This is not fair. I am tired of this. And I just went down the list, down the list, in the back of a plane. Big old 200 some odd seat plane with only 50 of us on it. I'm just going down the list. Where, where, where are the things that everybody else has? Why, why are you doing this to me? I've been with you since I was nine. Why are you doing this? I want to go home. And you preachers stop acting like you haven't had those days. Uh huh. Didn't want to see no more of his people. No, didn't. Let, let somebody else do it. I'm going home. I quit. Here are the keys. I'm out. And he said this to me. He said, I never promised you you would not feel the burden of ministry. I never promised you that you wouldn't feel the weight of what you're doing. I just promised you I'd be there to help you. Then he asked me a series of questions. Ah, that shut my mouth up. He asked me simply, What do watch the Lord see you through? Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure and be not entangled in that bondage again. You just stand and endure for God. When you've done all you can And it seems like you can't make it through Do you all know this? Well, you just stand 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 Don't you dare give up Through the storm Through the rain Oh, 
Have you done all you can? 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 Oh my, have you gone through the hurt? Gone through all the pain? Have you gone through the storm? After you've gone through the rain, you thought it over and you prayed it over. Square your shoulders, all oh, instead. Put your head up in the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand yeah. Have you done all you can? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do all you know how to do. Have you done all you can? Oh, have you done all you can? You've been wounded, you've been scarred. Right in this room. Sometimes you had to cry all through the night. That's all right. When you look for someone to help you through, they weren't there. You tried. God knows you really tried with all your might. Yes, God. You prayed and cried. You prayed and cried Prayed and cried Prayed cried Prayed cried Prayed cried Prayed cried Prayed cried But it's time to stand up tall Comes the time you gotta stop crying you cannot remain the eternal victim. Hear what I'm saying? Never let the devil see you cry. Oh, that doesn't make sense to you, but never let the devil see you cry. How do I do that? Listen, there's a place you can go. The devil can't see you there. There's a place that you can go He doesn't have access to Where? He that dwelleth In the secret place Of the most high God Shine Under the shadow Under the shadow Under the shadow Of the most high God Have you done all you can? Have you done all you can? Have you done all you can? You just standing on the promises. I'm finished. Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, yes I am. Standing, standing on the promises of Christ. I'm not going to 
going nowhere. Sam Ding. face of God to bring you the greatest anointings burden remove and yoke destroy anoint every generation has a yoke and every generation has a polarity an anointing to destroy that yoke God raises up men to smash women, to smash those yokes all week long. It hasn't mattered what service you've been here. 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, packing this building out to receive the Word of God. In these evening services, what a visitation of the Spirit of God. I purposely purposely save brother Noel Jones until Friday night because you don't put new wine in old skin we got rid of some stuff we're empty and we're ready for a divine deposit it's my first opportunity to welcome him to Dominion Camp Meeting. Will you join me in welcoming from Los Angeles, California, Bishop Noel Jones. I would that you would join hands with someone, stretch across the aisle and leave no one untouched tonight. The presence of the Lord is in this place and someone might not have had a good a day as you have had, but I believe that the presence of the Lord in you moving to that person next to you can make a difference tonight. With all that God has done in your life, if you could just 
intercede on behalf of the person right next to you. Not my situation, not my affairs, but if God would just bless my brother or my sister, if the Lord would just take him to the next level, take her to the next level, my soul would be blessed. Lord, I want you to bless the hands I hold. Touch my brother and my sister. We come together, Lord, looking for a blessing. We need a word from you. We need a touch from you. Move until you get through. We ask that you sublimate, that you be exalted tonight, that you be lifted, that you, Lord God, be preeminent in all things. So now bless the hands I hold. Bless my brother and my sister coming and going. Let every word that they have heard this week become a standard by which they live. Lord, bless the hands I hold. Anoint the hands I hold. Deliver and set free the hands I hold. Have your way in the life of the hands I hold. And I intercede right now. I will not let the devil in on my brother. I will not let him in on my sister. But I will stand in the gap with the power of your spirit until every yoke is broken bless the hands i hold bless every ministry in this building and i claim it right now in the name of jesus send a double anointing now we claim it done we claim it done in jesus name give god a praise for yourself He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We do thank God just for being here tonight and surely for this great ministry that God has ordained for World Harvest Church. Certainly to Pastor Parsley and to his lovely wife, to his mother and to this retinue of ministry that's gathered across this whole building and through all of God's children we say praise the Lord and thank God for everyone that's here I don't have much time for this I brought some tapes uh, from praise to Thanksgiving I brought some things that'll bless you all these things will bless you by the help of God but I just feel the presence of the Lord in such a great way in this place tonight and uh, yes I know I have some product and stuff but sometimes you just feel like preaching that's you know you just feel like just feel like going to work I would be remiss in my duty tonight if we didn't give honor to God for such a great leader as Pastor Rod Parsley Amen and surely 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 world harvest you have a gift from God you have a gift from God Amen Amen the whole world has a gift from God and Pastor Rod Parsley, uh, we have been blessed by his ministry through the years. And it's just marvelous to be able to come and share in this congregation tonight. I know my friend Bishop Jakes has been here and I called him. I said, I hope you left me something. Just, just, <laughs> I hope you didn't take everything with you. And his son said, he said, he said, Bishop Jones, I saw it on TV and it's a mess. I mean, he just took everything. So, <laughs> Ah, uh, but we thank God. I thank God for all of my friends that I see here tonight. And it's just good to have friends. I thank God for Brother Gary Oliver. I've been friends for years. And his great ministry that God has ordained. And of course, to Marvin and Donnie and just to everybody. And um, Brother Perkins. Amen. And Perky, that's friend. And we thank God for everyone that's here tonight. I, I would, though, that you would look with me to St. John's Gospel, chapter 11. It's, it's, it's what we call a familiar passage of scripture and, and where you know, the old preacher would preach, he said, I'm gonna take you to a familiar passage of scripture. And, and oftentimes it's familiar on the surface. But then sometimes as you dig into it, it seems to get a little bit uh, unfamiliar. <laughs> And then you've got to call for the Holy Spirit to help you to dissect the Word of God. But in St. John chapter 11, uh, just 
to deal with certain aspects of the text. Of course, Lazarus was sick in Bethany and, and John is very careful to tell us it's the town of Mary and her sister Martha. In verse 2, if you notice, he, he emphasizes that there is a reciprocal relationship between Jesus and this family because it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. He is, he's em emphasizing and he's making very sure that we understand clearly that this is not just any person but he has a relationship with Mary with Martha and with Lazarus now in three says therefore his sister sent unto him and the therefore suggests a conclusion based on the relationship that is evident here the reciprocal relationship that Jesus has with this wonderful little family group we have a right send to Jesus and the word here is Lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick not only do we have a reciprocal relationship not only are we wonderfully ministering to you as you minister to us but now the brother of ours that we know you love dearly he is sick now John is trying to tell us that if Jesus should have gone to see anybody, he should have hurried down to see Lazarus. But then he says, when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And John reiterates in five Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But he can't understand why he would be so slow about responding to a cry from a group of people that they have reciprocal relationship little slow about it we know he's got all power in his hands we know he's a healer when he heard this verse 6 therefore that he was sick he abode two days still in the same place where he was hasn't moved at all can you imagine sending word to your pastor <laughs> Oh God, how many times have we gotten in trouble because we didn't move right away? You know, some people are sick, you got to make sure you get there before anything happens to them because you got to deal with their family. You pastors understand what I'm talking about here. We, you just better hurry up, get over there. Folk get upset when you don't come. It doesn't matter who you send. Some people are just looking for you. You know how that is. Folk get angry, church people get mad. <laughs> I sent for the pastor two days ago and he hasn't showed up yet and then sometimes people go to visit people and then when they're there you sent them to visit their own staff to visit and then they walk right in and ask has the pastor come to see you yet uh. so after that in seven he says let us go into Judea again and of course he was having trouble in Judea and the disciples weren't too quick on him going there anyway because they were seeking to so stone him. But 11, he says, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may wake him out of sleep. And the disciples couldn't figure that out. Well, if he's sleeping, he's doing all right. <laughs> he's he's got to be okay but Jesus of course was speaking about Lazarus being dead In verse 14 he says Lazarus is dead and I am glad <laughs> I 
maybe I'm dyslectic, but I, that's what I see. Lazarus is dead. And I am glad. Now he loves these people. They have been waiting for him. And he has not moved. Now he declares that the man is dead and he is glad. For your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless let us go unto him. He goes and of course Martha meets him as he comes. Which is typical of somebody who's angry. Who needs to talk to him privately. I, I, I got to meet him on the way. I will not let him get in here. I respect him too much. To talk to him any kind of way in front of these folks. So I will meet him along the way. And I want to know why you didn't come. Because if you had been here. My brother had not died. Wrong. He was going to die. I want him to die. He's dead and I'm glad. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Lord, but I know 22, even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it unto thee. Thy brother shall rise again. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this and of course she she felt a little faith rise and she responded said take me to where you've laid him 34 and then he said take away the stone then she hollered and he said, Lord, by this time he stinketh. He's been dead four days. And he said, didn't I tell you, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And of course he cried at the tomb, he wept, and then he hollered, Lazarus, come forth. My subject tonight is, there is a word for your situation. Come forth. Look at somebody and say, there is a word for whatever you're going through, you're coming out of it. You're coming out of it. Help us to I would like to point out that John's concern is about our concept of Christ. If you notice in the book of John, he never ever mentions his name. When he speaks of himself, he speaks of the other the disciple or the disciple whom Jesus loves, but he never ever mentions his name. It is said in theological circles that John has made very sure that Jesus is always visible and he invisible he makes sure that everything is focused on the Lord and when you read his writings you will see that he's extraordinarily Christocentric it's just everything's about Jesus and he presents him in such a manner that he tells us without God's communication to us we are doomed because if God does not speak to us there is absolutely no way for us to get out of any circumstance that we find ourselves in God has to speak to us and so John then presents the word of God in three forms he opens with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word here now in St. John 1 and 1 is our introduction to the word Logos, the Word. 
and logos actually denotes the expression of thought it is not a mere name of an object when you speak of the logos or the word that was with God the word that was God you're speaking about the word that was actually thought or the word that emanated out of the mind of God because before you have a word you have to have a thinker you have to have a thought before you have a word and to have a thought you got to have a thinker and the thinker is God and the logos is the representation or the expression of the thought that is God and so it is not an object it is an expression of thought I want you to stay with me now this and this thought is spirit so the logos then is with God the Greek is press with not meaning now in company with but the word has a most intimate relationship and communion with God you cannot separate God's word from his thought and you cannot separate God's thought from himself the word is then spirit and so the logos then the word is distinct and super finite it's, the logos is deity because the logos is God and and in the logos is the ability to create its creative power it is the same kind of expression when he says let there be light because and they say light is uh, it's a sort of oscillation of sound. That's, that's what scientists say. When you have light, it's an oscillation of sound. So when, when, when he said, let there be light, it, it left his mouth and it oscillated until uh, light appeared. It, uh, let there be light. Uh, now you will notice then that whenever you see logos, the writer adds a sentence like all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made because if there is a thought and the thought wants to reveal itself or manifest itself then in order to manifest there has to be a creation the, the beginning of manifestation when God chooses to manifest himself the very beginning of his manifestation is to create he, he has to create because in the canyons of eternity God by himself knowing himself does not need to manifest himself to himself so if he's going to show himself he has to first make something to show himself to uh, so so logos then is 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 with God logos is God because there is no marketing agency separate from God who can market God God has to market himself uh, so, so so wherever you see logos you will know that there has to be a creation uh, uh, so now then the spirit the word uh, the logos was God and the second form then is and the word became flesh and dwelt among us flesh creatures and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so now that that was with God that that was God the logos which manifests God became flesh and now we are able to see the logos in a panoply of flesh now we see the invisible spirit now it's key here now that it, it was he was not made you know but became flesh you see because now not made because that then puts him passive and but became makes him active so my action is voluntary I, I control the manifestative process nobody makes me I control the process of manifestation oh God so 
so now he then is created to reveal you see he created to reveal the, the reality and totality of his human nature and glory as the only begotten from the father which actually should be God only begotten is that he is created to reveal oh God the logos the word now becomes flesh and dwells among us in order to reveal the word which is spirit which is God you see I've got to bring God in your situation but I got to create in order to reveal uh, I want you to stay with me just a minute here uh, now the stress here is to the nature and character of the relationship he was the Shekinah glory in open manifestation that that's the word which was with God the word became flesh and so the only the God only begotten which is in the bosom of the father he hath declared him I, I've got to move in your situation and in your circumstance so you can see God in your situation or your circumstance but I control the manifestative process you don't control it I control it I, I will show you what I want to show you when I want to show it to you but I have to declare it by my own choice oh god i feel it here now uh, we take another step now and the next step goes to the third form of the word and and john now ex brings us to that in his epistle because he extends the contact that they had with the incarnate word because you and i didn't have the privilege of being in judea at the time that the incarnate word was evident in the universe we were not there we are some 2,000 years removed so what John did is say that which was from the beginning not of time now but of Jesus's ministry and our involvement which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon our hands having handled the word of life for the life was manifested that is the spirit became flesh and we have seen it and bear witness yes and show unto you that eternal life that was with the father and was manifested unto us now you see the sequence the spirit was with the father and became flesh we beheld the word but you are not here with us so that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also might have fellowship with us I have got to bring you into a relationship with the incarnate word which is a manifestation of the spirit word but you're out of my time so what I do is I will give you a Bible I will give you the written word which is my declaration of my association with the incarnate word which is a revelation of the spirit word uh, there is a word mm -hmm, there is a word now, now, now how might I put that the Bible is his declaration but his association was with the incarnate word which is a revelation of the spirit word so my Bible becomes the expression of Christ to us Christ is the expressed image of God and both are visible declaration but his association was with the incarnate word which is a revelation of the spirit word so my Bible becomes the expression of Christ to us Christ is the expressed image of God and both are visible in the Bible 
If I want to know Jesus, I got to know my Bible. If I want to know God, I've got to know Jesus. Are you with me? Oh God, can we go to the next step? Uh, Jesus now spoke as the incarnate word and, and, and here's one instance where he said I am the living bread which came down from heaven I am the bread of life and he said now except you drink my blood and except you eat my flesh then you have no life in you well obviously uh, we 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 I mean, we're intelligent people now. What is this eating business that you're talking about? How are we going to eat and drink your blood? If you notice, the Bible says that many of the disciples left because they stumbled at that statement. They couldn't grasp it. Now, what are we going to do with him now? He wants us to eat him. Even the disciples stumbled and he, he said to them and we're in John 6 here about verse 63 he said he, he said to them he said does this offend you they say yeah we got problems with this I'm, I mean this eating thing has got to go man he said what and if you see the son of man ascend from whence he came I guess you would say now there goes the lunch there goes dinner we, we sure can't eat him now he's going he says let me tell you something it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing the words that I speak they are spirit and they are life you don't eat the package but you tear open the package and eat the bread oh, I feel God in this house oh God oh Ooh, just looks like another package. Hold that organ, I hurt myself. Uh, you know, uh, the spirit of the incarnate word was life. And the spirit of the written word has life. Only the package is different. The package of the incarnate word moved in the earth in a particular time in human history. But the written word is the declaration of the incarnate word, which is a manifestation of the spirit word. There is spirit in this Bible. That's why sometimes when you read it, in the middle of what you're going through, something comes out of it that stands up in you and makes a difference in your life. I feel God in this place. I feel the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit that quickeneth. Uh, and so Jesus spake spirit words as the incarnate word. And as he recorded the spirit words spoken by the incarnate word, that became the written word. As the incarnate word. Uh, how might I put this? So you got to get to Logos to get Rhema. You don't get Rhema without Logos. You got to know Jesus to get Rhema. Because it's out of the Logos that Rhema comes. Uh, are you with me? Are you with me? Uh, and so now to accept one is to accept all. For all are the same. So for the first time, I know the baker, I know the bread, and I got the recipe. You see, God is the baker, Jesus is the bread, and the Bible... I feel God in here. Uh, uh, let's, can, can we go to the next level right here? Now, 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 thus then, we fulfill the significance of the title Logos because now we have the Word, the personal manifestation, not a part of the divine nature but the whole of the divine nature that's it because now logos now and we're going to get a little philosophical here for a minute logos then becomes that whole deity when you get a word from god you get god you can't have a word from god and not have god because god is his word if you got a word from god 
you got God in your situation <laughs> when the word comes forward from a normal little guy that looks like just an average man <laughs> but when the words come out <laughs> if it's the word of God it's God <laughs> that steps out of his mouth into your circumstance <laughs> and turns things around <laughs> uh, there is a word <laughs> uh, y'all sit down I, I just, just, just. so now the word then <laughs> is first of all the principle of the divine self manifestation in the very ground of being itself <laughs> now we're borrowing from Paul Tilling in the ground of being so what it's saying now is that the word <laughs> becomes the principle by which <laughs> God manifests himself. He uses the expression ground of being because it is out of God that everything comes. The creature to whom he wants to reveal himself and the revelation itself. God controls it all. That's why revelation must be given and revelation must be received or else it's not not revelation if God shows it but I don't get it then it's like he never showed it when he shows it I'm gonna get it because he doesn't show it for me not to get it that's why he says my word shall not return unto me void it's gonna do the job in your life and my life and it's going to start whenever I say I believe believe who God help me now I'm trying to behave but I feel something pushing me tonight uh, I feel the Holy Ghost the grounding is not only the abyss in which every form disappears but it's the source from which every form emerges and so the ground of being God has the character of self manifestation nobody can show you God I can only only speak in normal grammatic terms and put God's word towards your mind but it takes God to ram it in your heart I can speak to you intellectually but he'll speak to your need spiritually and when you get a word from God you just got in contact with God himself oh, let's go to the next step so the word then is the medium of creation for the logos for the purpose of manifestation now we go to the next level creates the situation for revelation he not only creates you but he also creates a series of events so that he might give you a series of revelation I got to create the situation it ain't got nothing to do with you it's what I want to do it's not by your timetable it's by my timetable I want you to learn certain things about me so what I do is I get in your life and I create certain situations so that I can give you some revelation about me who oh, I feel God in here look at somebody and say that's what's going on in my life God is getting ready to show me some new things that I never would know unless he created the situation for revelation oh God oh, I feel his presence can I take it a little further the logos then now when you deal with the dynamics of revelation in situation what you have now is a history of events that now make up or constitute the history of revelation do you have a history of God's revelatory moves in your life? Can't you not demark 
certain times in your life when God showed himself this circumstance he showed himself and the other the other day he showed himself and the other he showed himself and every time there is a revelation there is an increase in your faith for the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith I believed God and then he showed himself so I don't have to believe him for that I know him for that but because I know him for that I can believe him for that and then when I believe him he shows himself so I've got two things that he showed himself in so now I can believe him for more so the more I believe the more he reveals and the more I believe and the more he reveals and the more and the more and the more until I can look the devil in the face and say you can't make me doubt him I'm I know too much about him. Uh, Y'all excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh God, you see, this then brings us to Rhema. Because the word then is the manifestation of the divine life in the history of revelation. And so then the Rhema now that I get, it now is uttered from its Greek, it's uttered in speech or in writing so it is the rhema about the logos in the history of revelation i've got to have a history i've got to be able to predicate certain of my stands on what god has shown me <sighs> whom do men say that i the son of man am has got to give way to whom do you say because it's all right to go by the other person's revelation but I need to know him for myself oh God and so then he creates a situation for revelation he created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Nisi he created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Rovika. He created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Shalom. He created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Sikhanu. He created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Roa. He created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Shama. He created a situation for revelation and he called it Jehovah Makadish. So now I can say the Lord is my banner, the Lord is my healer, the Lord is my provider, the Lord is my righteousness, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is present, the Lord is my sanctifier, and devil you can go to the lake of fire. I feel God in this house. <laughs> Oh, give somebody a high five. Say, there is a word for your situation. What you want to call it, Jehovah, whatever your situation is, there is a word for your. Oh, there is a word. I feel God in here. Oh, God. You see, you see uh, this is this is where they missed it uh, this is where they missed it this, this little group this little family group uh, this is where they missed it uh, and that is that uh, I know you're my friends uh, and I know we have a reciprocal relationship uh, we have been enjoying each other's company but you see it's only his friends who get another revelatory experience the people who were not his friends he kept himself secret from them oh God when you're his friend 
then he sets up situations in order to give you another insight to just how powerful he is the only thing you're going through right now is the Lord setting up another situation in order to show you just who he is oh God I feel you he's getting ready to show you that there is no boss that can stop you he's getting ready to show you that I can bless you in spite of how people treat you he's getting ready to show you that it's no thing wrong with what you're doing I just want some glory out of you Oh, I feel God in this place. Oh, bless his name. Oh. Well, just go on and praise him for a minute. what's going on he's just setting you up for a revelation set you up to see his power set you up oh god to make oh the sickness oh yes i know it's the same mary which anointed my feet and it's the same mary that wiped my feet with her hair and I know who she is and I know who Lazarus is but this sickness is that the son of God might be glorified you just drop all the other parts out and here's how it would read this sickness is but for the glory of God it ain't no other reason for it I'm just putting a situation together that I might get some glory out of here that's why I'm glad he's dead and I'm glad because I'm gonna get some glory I'm gonna get some glory <laughs> I uh, took somebody say I'm getting ready to glorify God my life my job my circumstance my soul my spirit my church my mind my I'm getting ready to glory I'm getting ready to glorify God oh God it's for the glory of God sometimes you can't understand it because after all I am a friend how could we be so close to him and be so reciprocal in our ministries and he just totally ignore us because when it comes to the glory of God my relationship I must understand is for his glory and he'll push me to the edge of my faith and push me to the edge of my grief and push me to the edge of my circumstance and when I think that it's all over he'll step right in with a mighty hand and get some praise that I've never given him yet oh God you God's getting ready to get some praise out of your life that you have never given him yet tell your neighbor you got some praise that you haven't yet given God and God's getting ready to pull it out of you reach in your gut and get it out of you because he's getting ready to bring you out with a mighty hand I feel your presence in this place he's getting ready to pull it out of you he's getting ready to show you his hand you know him as Jehovah Jireh but do you know him as Jehovah Rofa you got to know him in all aspects then you can tell the devil get out of my house oh God oh, it is relationship that brings revelation and it is here then that is the conflict 
because grief plays with faith when you're going through something and you can't figure it out and most of us because of our traditional association to good behavior we generally cannot understand how it is that he does not respond when we have done everything right I grew up in an extraordinarily traditional environment so I understood when I was wrong that there would be judgments and punishments but I couldn't understand that when I was doing everything right how come things happen to me that I just cannot figure out because I did not see the other factor and that is he creates the situation to show me another side of himself it has nothing to do with my behavior it has all to do with his program of revelation for my life for I cannot be effective if I don't go through something I got to know how to go through in order to declare who he is and that's why today you can look at your circumstance and say because he brought me out he's going to bring me out right now there is a word oh god i feel you here so now in the middle of my grief i've got to look beyond myself and let my eyes leave my situation and let faith show me revelation because I'm caught between my situation and my revelation if I go by my situation coming through my flesh pulling down my mind I will be depressed and argumentative in a time where I ought to let my faith tap into his spirit and renew my mind because I'm not conformed to my situation but I walk by revelation that's why I don't have to wait till the battle's over because I don't live by situation I live by revelation and all I need is a word is there a word from the Lord if I get a word I can already dance before the battle is over there is a word you ought to praise him right now I don't care what you're going through there is a word I feel the spirit of God here oh God I'm not going to keep you too much longer but here is where Martha was fighting because she was extraordinarily traditional and she understood that there were certain things that I must get from the Lord and get them quickly that is why if you had been here my brother would not have died wrong honey he's creating a situation so if he still had come he was still going to die because the plan was I need to show that I am the resurrection and the life can I have a little church in here tonight touch somebody and say it's church time I feel a little churchy oh God and so now she goes to her tradition but that's the problem with us today we run to tradition looking for an answer but honey it ain't in the tradition you need a right now word because what I'm going through I don't have any book on it God's taking me through a new thing to show me new revelation and so she hollered he'll raise on the last day and he hollered I am the last day I am the resurrection and the life and I'm getting ready to do something for you now that you're looking for tomorrow shake somebody's hand and say not tomorrow I got to have it now by the power of God 
I feel the Holy Ghost now. If you got enough faith to believe me, I don't have to work it out next year. I can work it out right now because I saw the sign when I walked in the door. Now is the time of Jubilee and it's my time. My time for my thing and it's right now. Can I just preach? I don't want to lecture no more. I want to preach like the old time because I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Shake somebody's hand like you go shake it off and say neighbor there is a word come forth it's your time to rise up out of your mess and come on out I feel like preaching in here somebody declare well what I'm going through is too much and I can't get through it but God does not matter how dead your situation is there is a word for your situation nothing is too dead for God I don't care how long you've been living beneath your privilege the word is now you can have it all now because all this week you got a word so pick up the word which is your sword and tell the devil get out of my face because it's mine and I don't care how dead you are can I preach just a minute then I'm gonna close it didn't matter that for four days his heart had stopped it didn't matter whether or not you've lost heart all you need is a word it didn't matter that for four days bacteria began to grow releasing enzymes which dissolve the body from the inside producing gas and bloated it didn't matter how distorted he was there was a word that would move the distortion it didn't matter that his features were unrecognizable and his body smelled like rotten meat it didn't matter I feel the Holy Spirit in here tell your neighbor it don't matter there's a word for it it didn't matter that 10 minutes after he died flies arrived and laid thousands of eggs in his eyes in his nostrils and in his mouth and that three days later the eggs began to hatch and the maggots fed on his tissue it didn't matter that beetles ate up his dry skin and 24 hours later spiders showed up that ate up the beetles that ate up the bugs that ate up his skin but when he said Lazarus come forth it didn't matter because the bugs had to give up the beetles that ate up the spiders that ate up his skin and if you get a word you can tell the devil you gotta give me back that you took from me there is a word I feel the Holy Ghost give Palm Party high five and say there is a word for your situation and everything the devil took from you he's got to give it back I got to tell him I want it back I got a word that everything is gonna work out fine I got a word that God is looking for some glory out of my life I got a word that he doesn't have to heal my body if he can raise me from the dead I got a word that 
in a moment he's going to turn it around pull on somebody say I'm coming out I'm coming out I'm coming out of bondage coming out of heartache I'm coming out I heard my name I heard my name Jesus just call me and I I'm coming out I'm wrapped up but I'm coming out I'm tied up but I'm coming out I'm messed up but I'm coming out I've been dead but I'm coming out I'm coming out shout hallelujah somebody ought to praise him there is a word, there is a word, there. I feel like shouting, do you see what I see, do you see what I see, I see a lot of folk that's been bound, moving like an army, devil you're a liar, cause look at the army of coming forth, put somebody say let's go forth, your talent is ready, he's ready for your gift, he's ready for your talent, he's ready for your testimony, he's ready for your word, he's ready for you, let's go forth, let's give him glory, let's lift him up, let's tell the devil, Everything you've been struggling with, God's just setting you up. And real soon, 
you're going to hear your name. And when you hear your name, I don't care how rough it is, just start coming out. And when you make a step, he'll holler loose the man. Tell somebody I'm getting ready to be loose. My gifts, my anointing, my victory, my praise, my joy. There is a word. My ministry. I'm closing. I want you to take one person by both hands. Ayashata. Every seat is an altar. I want you to get one person by both hands. Whatsoever things you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth are loose in heaven. We're going to bind some things and loose some things right now you have been here all week you have heard from heaven different vessels but the same spirit and on the close of this great meeting you're walking out of here with the spirit to bind some things and loose some things you got the keys because keys come from revelation when he said thou art the Christ the son of the living God he gave him some keys whatsoever thou bind on earth oh you know some things in your home need to be bound you need to bind hey God just pray with me in the name of Jesus squeeze one hand I bind every spirit of doubt I bind every spirit of depression. I bind every low self-esteem that may run through this building. I bind fear. I bind whisperers and slanderers. I bind every deceitful worker. I bind right now. I bind, I bind satanic powers in high places. I bind it in the mind and in the spirit of your children. I bind right now every conspiracy, every conspirator, everything that has been designed to break down the child of God. Squeeze your other hand. I lose victory. I lose a double, triple anointing. I lose power. I lose your glory. I lose your joy and your peace. I lose prosperity. Lose that house. Lose that car. Lose that new job. Lose, Lord. Do it now. In the name of Jesus. I claim it right now. Loose that ministry. Now give God some glory. He wants the glory. He wants the glory. glory. Yes. There is a word. There is a word. I'm going home with a word. I'm moving with a word. I've got a word. Yeah. Oh, God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. God bless you tonight. Oh, somebody praise him. Give God some more glory. Hey, glory. 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 Do you feel a little churchy tonight? Do you feel like praising him? Tell somebody there is a word. Things are going to change. Because I got a word. Turn around one time. Yes. That's a word.
year. If you're going to accept it, let him know. That way I'm going to be received. Tell him I receive it. I receive I dare you to shout. You are taking no time to celebrate. I get, I've been getting letters. I've been getting letters from Dr. Dumbbell and Sister Yeye, written in crayon. Wait a minute. Saying, well, that's all right. Saying, Brother Parsley. How can you declare jubilee? We've studied the charts. We've studied the ancient history. And uh, we have calculated that uh, Pluto has not yet aligned in the age of Aquarius. Therefore, jubilee is not for three months and two days. You know when jubilee is. closed the book when he had given them a revelation 
of who he was and then he said you may take it accept it or leave it reject it I come to get my stuff I'm gonna get mine I would like for you to be seated no one is moving They that labor in the word, worthy of double honor, double, double. Now you gave Bishop Jakes an offering and you gave Brother Shambach an offering and you gave me an offering. And it's time for double, double. Anything you've given any preacher this week, I have never been more blessed, fed in, been fed more fully. I just, I just had to walk around. I, I kept saying, I, I wish he'd say something. I just hate when they imply so much. I want this man to go home knowing the character of the people he has preached to this night. I want him to go home saying, my God, I've been there when it felt that way. It was that way. In Detroit, I got on that airplane, just walked around holding it up, said, look here. I just want you to see what it looks like showing off that check. Because then I knew my ministry had hit its mark and had been received as something of value i want noel jones to go home feeling that way i want you right now don't you move the doors are locked there ain't nowhere to go there ain't nowhere to go but you come in here and eat this man's grain and leave your dung He didn't get that out of some book. He had to labor to receive that word. Some folks say, well, he preached hard. Honey, all the hard work was done before he ever got up here. He had to labor over that thing to give birth to it. I want you right now to get an envelope. Last offering of this week. Get an envelope. Get out your checkbook. If you're going to make out a check, You put a WHC on it. I promise you with my word, every dollar that comes in in this offering will go to Bishop Noel Jones. You give, knowing, I'm not going to go back in the back and say, well, how much was his airfare here? Take that out. Well, how much was his hotel? Take that out. I don't ever take anything out. I put stuff in, but I don't ever take anything out. Every dollar you give, every dollar. I'm not a thief. Every dollar you give in this offering will go to bless this man of God. And you give with a joy-filled revelation that that's exactly what you're giving to. Oh my God, I've been set up. Ooh, just touch somebody, tell them I'm set up, I've been set up. I've been set up. Ah. I asked the Lord, why would you let, why would you let my baby be born with 140 IQ and not be able to say my name? 
And God said to me, so I could get the glory. I knew, I knew you'd give me the glory when I touch it. I've been set up. Been set up. I'm just giving you time to write. You watching me. I don't know. You're writing. Look at somebody next to you and say, is that the best you can do? You must not have gotten anything out of this. Look at him and say, do you need something to give? Is that your problem? Oh, I want to bless this man. Oh, I want to, oh, I want to bless this man tonight. I want to bless him. I want to bless him. Over in the overflow. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Are you ready? Are you ready to give? You wouldn't sing for me, would you? Would you sing for me? Would you? I don't want to impose. Would you sing for me? He's going to sit down there and sing. Somebody going to play for him. Oh. Oh. Nobody is moving until this offering is received. Ah, and then we'll be dismissed in the presence of the Lord. No reason to hurry out there to hell anyway. Dear God, this it's a two hours early and we've got out of here any night. Huh? We may have another round. I may turn Pastor Wyman's loose. Preach again. Glory to God. I ain't in no hurry, you. Hallelujah. Lord God, bless this offering. <laughs> bless your servant. Oh, God, let his heart be ministered to when he opens up this check. See, the people of God heard and received and responded to that word that he paid such a price to deliver. In Jesus' name, for his glory. Amen. Give as unto the Lord. Enjoy Pastor Marvin Wynan. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe. Brought me this far to leave me. Can I say one more time? I don't feel no way From where I started from Nobody told me That the road would be there oh, oh, but, but I don't believe He brought me this far God for as the word was preached today we see so vividly how God takes us from one station to the next and his desire is so that we can get to know him and so I, I tell people that my present faith is based on a past experience I know he's able to deliver because I already know he has delivered. And it's so, it's so wonderful 
to hear, Lord, I, I, I really do need to sit down because I'm, I'm from church where we didn't get out to 12 and 1. But I just want to say that one more time, Donnie, without a beat. I don't feel no waste time. Because I really have come too far from where I started. I started from Nobody told me Nobody said that the road That the road would be easy You can't make me believe That the Lord brought me this far For without God, I could do nothing. And without God, I, I would fail. Without God, my life would be dreary. That's why I don't believe He brought me this far Ooh, I don't believe y'all He brought me this far I said that I don't believe He brought me this far To leave For we may never know I'm through All the people we have touched For we may never We may never know oh, oh, oh. All the lives that we have reached But we know We really do know you know and the record you do keep and win the end to finally begin we will receive a great reward for what we've done thank you Jesus We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. If you believe it, lift those hands and say, We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. Keep on working, Pastor, keep on preaching. We'll receive a great Reward for what we've done. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. We'll receive. Oh, 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 what we've done. Keep on working, keep on praying. We'll receive a great reward. Great reward for what 